Hi, welcome to this video series. I'm going to talk about a really interesting problem related to the size of the block ciphers. So far, we talked about uh, different ciphers, um, cipher modes like um, CBC, CTR, GCM, and so on. Um, we didn't pay close attention to the impact of the block cipher length itself. You know, um, the, the, of course, uh, people talk um, about the key size, like uh, for example, uh, 64 bit, 128 bit, 256 bit, and so on. But it is also interesting and important to, to know why the block ciphers, like for example, if you take um, CBC mode, and if you use, say, um, in AES, the block cipher length is uh, 128 bit. And uh, if you use CBC with, uh, say, DES or 3 DES, the block cipher length there is um, 64 bit only. Uh, what is the impact of the block cipher length uh, on overall security? It will be interesting to know more about that. Um, and, and, and I am going to shed some light on that topic today. Um, so um, I thought of taking an example from the internet, uh, but I will customize it to a smaller scale so that we could do something hands-on. Um, um, on the practical insecurity of 64-bit block ciphers, they, they call this as a sweet 32 attack. Um, 64 bit is um, um, uh, um, 2 power 64 possible values, and due to the birthday paradox, uh, the, it, um, the collision happens if you encrypt um, around the 2 power 32 blocks. That's the, basically the the, um, the sweet 32 paradigm. Okay. Anyway, um, one of the problems um, I noticed when I read the paper um, is that it requires um, a lab setup. Uh, it requires a lot of data to be collected before this, this collusion occurs. So the idea um, uh, that I'm going to pursue is slightly different. I'm, going, I'm not going to take a 64-bit block cipher. I'm going to take a 32-bit block cipher. Luckily, there are some 32-bit block ciphers available online. Um, I'm going to take one developed by NSA. Um, uh, that's called the spec, uh, which I will show you in a moment. Um, what I'm going to talk about is that, so um, I'm going to instantiate AES, uh, so not exactly AES, spec uh, in, in CBC mode. Um, so we have seen CBC mode in the past. You have an IVE, uh, the first block of the message is X out of the IVE, and then we feed into an encryption algorithm. Uh, in, in, in this case, it's going to be spec. The, the case that I'm going to talk about is spec. The, this paper is about um, a, a, a DES or 3 DES. Um, so it, instead of EK, you can imagine me calling the spec, okay? And then I will get an output, and that output is XORed with the next part of the plain text, and then we call the uh, spec engine, and, and so on. Okay, so this is how the, the CBC mode works. What, does it, what kind of collusion I'm talking about? The collusion I'm talking about is, or this paper also talks about, is that um, when will these two ciphertexts collide? For example, ciphertext this one, or any two ciphertexts per se, collide. How many blocks should I encrypt before I get the collusion? And what does it really mean by collusion of ciphertext blocks? Uh, what can I infer about the plain text from the collusion of the ciphertext blocks? So those are the, the, the questions I'm going to dive into the details now. Okay, so I talked about the overall goal is to understand collusion of ciphertext blocks. Um, I'm going to focus only um, on, on the CBC um, um, ciphertext mode. Okay, and I will be using the spec as the encryption engine for us. And uh, luckily, I will treat the spec as a black box, so we don't have to spend time understanding all of the details of the spec algorithm. Um, what I'm going to do is I will take uh, a specific configuration of spec. Spec allows us to use, luckily, 32-bit block size because they wanted to do, promote um, these kinds of um, algorithms for IoT devices and so on. Um, yeah, anyway. Um, I'm not going to get into the political aspect of uh, the spec and NSA and so on. I'm going to just leverage spec uh, for my analysis. So I will take spec uh, with the 32-bit block cipher and the 64-bit key size. Okay, that's what I'm going to take. Very simple set, con um, uh, configuration. Uh, just to talk about the collusion problem. Okay, so um, I talked about birthday paradox in one of my earlier uh, videos. I mentioned that if you sample elements from a collection of n items. Um, after you sampled about two power n by two items, um, um, you will uh, very likely uh, you will very likely have um, 
um, a collusion. So, so I think I, I, I said something wrong there. Uh, let me rephrase it. Suppose you have say two power n items, okay? And you, 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 you sampled about uh, say two power n by two items, then there is a 50% chance that um, the two of the items will be the same. That's basically what at the high level, the birthday products idea is. So let's see whether we can replicate that idea on CBC mode using the spec um, cipher, cipher block. Okay. So in order to do that, I need to of course have an implementation of spec. Luckily I could get a spec engine available online from uh, this GitHub site, the, the Lua Inc. Uh, website hosts the um, uh, spec engine. So I just essentially downloaded the spec engine from them. And I'm, I, I just uh, use this as a black box, as I said, okay? So um, what I'm going to show you now is the overall idea of um, um, why block size matters. And I will instantiate this framework using CBC mode uh, with spec 32-bit block cipher, okay? That's what I'm going to do now. So um, let's, let's see, what happens if, if uh, two blocks uh, collide? Maybe we should think about that way first. Suppose ith block of ciphertext collides with the jth block of ciphertext, okay? What does this mean? This means that in the CBC context, okay, what do, how do we get CI? Maybe we should go back to this picture. Uh, we get, how do we get this ith block? We get the ith block by taking the ith block of the message, XR it with the J, uh, I minus one block of the ciphertext. Okay, that's basically it. So which, how did we get this? This means we get the ith block, XR it with, uh, this is not exponential symbol, this is XR symbol, XR it with C, I minus one, okay, which is equal to M J X R C J minus one, okay. All right, so um, if we have an expression like this, you could easily uh, bring one um, X R term to the other side. Okay, so we are into an interesting situation now. We are in a situation like this. This is what We'll, uh, we have when two block cipher blocks are the same. Um, if we XR the previous blocks, like what is the previous block of ith block? I minus one block, right? XR it with the previous block of CJ, which is the CJ minus one block. Of course, play, uh, cipher texts are public. So this these two things are easy to calculate. Okay, now we are in a situation like this. We are in a situation, let me simplify this, okay? Is some constant that we have observed from the traffic, okay? This equation is easy to solve, especially if M, your message blocks are coming from, say, the English language, um, which has some structure. There are research papers online that you could uh, research on how to find the messages given the XR between them, okay? There, there are some very nice, uh, interesting ideas out there. And uh, you can also argue, what if you know, what if you know MI? If you know MI, you can immediately derive MJ because CMJ is nothing but that constant XR with MI, okay? So collusion in uh, CBC is dangerous, right? Pollution is problematic when using the CBC mode. Okay, this is the main point. Okay, now the question is, um, what is the chance that this collision happens really? Does it happen in, in practice? Okay, for that, I have the complete implementation ready, so I will, I will hopefully convince you that that happens. Again, um, maybe I should say this, my demo is going to be on a 32-bit block cipher, which is uh, from NSA, NSA spec block cipher. Okay, let's, try, let's, let's look at this now. Let's compile my code. This is my 
a little wrapper around the, um, the spec implementation. And I'm going to now just run it and to show you whether collision happens or not. Okay, yep. How many, um, let me explain what this, 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 these lines of the output you're seeing. First of all, the first column here is the block number, like block number 115673. And uh, what is the output? This is the output ciphertext. Okay, this, this, this one, for example. Second column is this output. And the third column is what is the value that we feed into the block cipher, in this case, the spec. Okay, so the three columns. This is the input to the block cipher. I'm sorry. This is the input to the block cipher, and this is the output from the block cipher. Okay. Again, this is the uh, block cipher uh, number, you know, block number one, two, or zero, one, two, and so on. And this is the input to the block cipher, and this is the output of the block cipher. Okay. All right. So what what are we seeing here? Well, let me um, let me run it like this one more time. Okay, what we are seeing is pretty interesting that after encrypting 14,504 blocks, which is not a lot of blocks, we imagine, you can imagine now I'm working with 32 bit block cipher. So it's not a lot of bytes, say the right. Um, after encrypting 14,504 blocks, two of my blocks output collided. Okay, what does it really mean? It means one of the blocks here, the output, output actually, not the input at this point, but this this one is the same as this one. Okay. Okay, now, um, what can we see here? Okay, well, you can see here that um, the block number 14,504, which may or may not be visible now, I didn't uh, store it to a file. Let's see whether I can find it. Let me run it again and, and, re, and, and redirect to a file so that we can analyze it quickly. Okay, so now collision happens after 26,234 blocks are encrypted. Okay, let's look at the last line because that's where I stop in my output. So this is, remember, this is the input to the block cipher and this is the output, right? Let's search for the output and see whether uh, two outputs occur multiple times. This is once and this is twice. Okay, so we see block number 26234 has the same data as the block number 31303. And if you have paid attention, the second column is also the same actually. Let me go back to that. See here, that's 9A752BFB, uh, same as this. Why is the second column also same? Remember, as I said earlier, the output format is this, right? The output format is block number. This is the block number zero, one, so on. Input to the uh, block cipher. Uh, input to the cipher. And then output, right, of the cipher. Since we are using the CBC mode, if two outputs are the same, and uh, the block cipher itself is a permutation, meaning it's a one, 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 and onto function. If two outputs are the same, the two inputs must have been same. So, so what we are saying here is that if for some reason these two ciphertexts are the same, then it must be the case that the input here is the same as the input here. Okay, these two, this this one. Let me annotate here. I'm talking about if this one and this one are the same then whatever we feed in here must be the same as feed in here, okay? Of course, this can be different. These two things can be different, okay? Uh, and, and it will be most likely different in many, many cases. Anyway, so um, what we have confirmed now is that, yes, collusion happens. And, and did you remember the number in my run? The number was um, how many? rows do I have? Okay, well, only after 31,000, approximately after 31,000, I got a collusion with the with another item we saw. Uh, 20, uh, that means in this case, the 26,234th block has the same data as the 31,303 
block. The input and the output of the ciphertext match. Okay, excellent. This is basically it. Uh, what did we learn so far? We learned that block ciphers, um, especially when, when used in um, um, cipher modes like a CBC, um, actually I will talk in the next video about other modes, but at this point, uh, focus. let's focus on the CBC mode, that the output will collide um, after um, two power n by two um, blocks are encrypted. Okay, so at least um, with, the high, with the high confidence, we can say that. So what it means is that our block cipher length in this case was 32, right? Block cipher um, size is 32 bit. Therefore, how many possible output outputs we can see? In this case, this means um, exponential symbol now, okay? Sorry, I don't have a fancy editor. So this is an exponential symbol. So we have two power 32 possible values, right? That many possible values we can expect here. It could be one of the two power 32. Here is another one of the two remaining two power 32 values and so on, okay? It cannot be the same. Um, if it is same, the input must have been same. That's what we just learned, okay? All right, so that is good. And um, what we can tell is that we can expect collusion after uh, encrypting two power 16 blocks or so. Right, so we, we can run it again and see whether that behavior is true. Let's try, okay. In this case, there were no collusion for some reason. Yeah, <laughs> um, well, there was, when I say no collusion in the previous run, I was only running up to uh, two power six, 17 or so, okay. So it's not, uh, I didn't run all the possible two power 32 blocks. Then, then of course, um, uh, if you're running it, um, uh, only for that, then, then the collusion may not have occurred. Okay, um, so now we can easily see that. Okay, after after um, um, after doing two power, well, let's let's look at two power. Uh, um, what could be this number? It is it is approximately two power um, fourteen, right? After um, um, how many blocks did we run? It, it, the output shows that. After we encrypted uh, to 91,345, so I was wrong earlier. So it was some, somewhere around 2 power 16 to 2 power 17. Uh, we have a collusion with another block number 28410. Okay, those two blocks, these two blocks have the same output here. The ciphertexts are the same. All right, so this kind of confirms that in the range of 2 power 16 to 2 power 17, you, we can expect collusion to happen. Okay, let's, let's try again. Not now. Yep, here again we can see after encrypting 92,537 blocks, which is not a lot of blocks, okay, uh, we got a collusion. Okay, so now uh, we are convinced that the collusion happens, and we are also convinced that given the collusion, we can actually find one of the input messages. So, of course, the goal of the um, uh, attacker is to learn these messages, right? How can we learn these? How can they learn these messages? They can learn these messages, message blocks. Uh, if, if two of the ciphertext blocks collide, they have this nice equation because of the way ECB, uh, because of the way CBC mode works. Um, they, can, uh, they can combine uh, these, these things together and they can form a mathematical equation as simple as this. And then they can um, use um, um, statistical analysis uh, to find out message m and uh, message block i and message block j from this constant because this constant is the constant that they got from XORing the two blocks of ciphertext okay that's basically it so we can actually derive one message block from another message block um, if uh, we know one of them of course and if you don't know both of them we can find out the possible values of uh, two of the message blocks. This is a standard problem in cryptography, so it's nothing spectacular here. Okay, so I will not go into the details of how to solve this equation. Okay, that's something um, it can be explained in a separate uh, talk or in a future video session or so on. Anyway, um, what I have tried to demonstrate to you is that if we use a 32-bit block cipher, 
we can expect collusion to happen after 2 power 16 blocks are encrypted or so. And one more interesting thing though is that in this attack, we never leverage the key size. Oftentimes, uh, we hear people talking about DES and three, uh, in particular because of a small uh, key size, but that's not the only reason. That's also the block cipher length matters. Okay, um, The block cipher that I have chosen here is only 32-bit block cipher. That means uh, it takes only 32-bit input and 32-bit output, which is not good because we, as you have seen just now, collision happens. So now let me quickly show you the implementation details. Okay, I actually uh, wrote a proof of concept. I implemented myself uh, the CBC mode using the spec uh, as, a as a block cipher engine. So the algorithm itself is straightforward once we know the structure. What I am doing here is that um, um, I start with my data to be zero, okay? And uh, of course I need an IV, that's something I created here. First block, how do we encrypt the first block? We XOR the IV with the data to get the ciphertext, and then we uh, send that ciphertext to, to an encrypt algorithm, right? I'm using the spec engine, which will encrypt the ciphertext to produce another ciphertext, which is in this case, the same variable. So the ciphertext is updated after, um, basically, if you recall the picture, I take the IV, take the first block of the message, XOR it, and then send it to the spec, and that's going to give me the output, okay? That's basically what I have here. And then, what I'm going to do is I check in my map, I, I created a hash map. I check whether um, the, the ciphertext that I just got uh, from my um, encryption um, call is actually uh, already observed. If it is already observed, I know I, I found a collusion. And then I say, okay, I got the collusion. Uh, this is the ciphertext, right? The map.get will give me the ciphertext uh, value, okay? And then I, I print the 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 cipher uh, the cipher text, and then if I don't have a collusion, I put in my map the the cipher text. Right, it is just a, a conversion from byte array to integer because I'm working with a 32-bit integer, so it's much easier to to use an integer. And I what is this i i is the block number, right? Zero, one, two, and so on. And then I increment the block number for the data. I have a very simple and um, strategy, I just initialize the data to be zero, one, two, one, three, and that, that's basically the incre increment functions doing, and that's all. Okay, let me explain everything quickly. All I did is basically um, CBC mode Im implementation using the spec32 engine, which you will not do it on your in your production code, but it's okay for a proof of concept code to implement your own uh, wrapper. Okay, so, um, what is the input to the hash map? The hash map is basically two things, right? The ciphertext and um, the corresponding block number, okay? That's what I, I have put in my, um, in, my, um, in my map. I think I made a small mistake. I, let me fix this quickly. Okay, so I wanted to be able to say, does my map contains the test? What does it mean? It means that, um, my cipher text is already observed or not. If it is observed, what I'm printing here is the corresponding I value, which is basically the block number. But if you wanted to, to, to see the, um, ah, okay, I think I was, sorry for that. I'm, I'm pointing the wrong here. So here it is, here it is. So I print for each block the, the input, Right, the input is basically XORing the IV together with the data. That's the, the print part, there's no new line. That's the reason um, we get a table output. In the next line, uh, we feed it to the um, spec engine, which will update the ciphertext, and that will, that will give us the, uh, the, the, the output that we are seeing here, right? This, uh, this output. So I'm printing the input here and the output here. That's what I'm doing, and then, I continue, uh, and, and and as soon as I get the collusion, I stop it, and then I, 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 I exit my loop. That's basically it. And the reason why I am only doing it for one uh, left suit by 17 is that because of birthday paradox, we expect uh, collusion after two power uh, 16 to two power 17 in, in, um, 
range, right? For high, um, just two per 16 would have been better, but anyway, um, this is fine, right? We expect to have a collusion um, in that range. Um, that's what I did here, okay. So, so basically it actually, this, this portion of code that you're seeing uh, related to spec engine encrypt um, is, is already uh, packaged uh, online uh, from the GitHub site. Now, all I'm doing is I'm just calling that to, to get the 32-bit ciphertext as output. So what I try to summarize is that if um, two of the ciphertext blocks are the same, uh, we can learn about the um, input messages just because of the way the CBC mode is, is structured. And, uh, and the suite 32 actually talks about um, attacks on 64-bit block cipher, right? This is a nice site to, to learn more, the de more about the details. Um, they call it birthday attacks on 64-bit block cipher. But uh, if you read it, um, it's an interesting paper. However, for, for people to replicate, it will take some time. It take, they took two days to collect uh, um, around the 700 and um, how many GBs did they say? Um, let me search for that, please. So it was somewhere here. Um, yeah, so it was about 785 GB of data um, before they could uh, break into uh, this, this, this um, system. Um, anyway, um, the simplified version is much easier to duplicate. So um, I convinced hopefully that um, block cipher mode um, um, matters first and um, the block size matters, okay? So it's not just the key size, it's also the block size, okay? That's basically it, thank you.